Hello everyone, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm doing the assembly tutorial for the Memory Dex Address Card Box Draw. This project has been designed by Nicole's husband Ben and for this video I'll call him Ben Silhouette. I'll also link Nicole's YouTube channel in the description box below. The Memory Dex box drawer is available as a cutting die set in Becky's store and it's also available as a digital cutting file in Nicole's Etsy store and I shall link both of those in the description box below. For today's tutorial I'm using the digital cutting file. I have all the pieces cut out and I'll go through them with you now. So I have the pieces here, the pieces on my left here make up the outer box that house the drawer and the pieces on the right are the drawer pieces. So I'll go through the pieces for the outer box now. These are the top and bottom pieces of the drawer and you can see where I've put the double sided tape on the glue tape on the end on the inside and that will get folded down to create a strong piece for the top and bottom. The next two pieces are the left and right sides and you can see where I've put the double sided tape on the glue tabs and also on that inside piece because that will get folded down and glued to become strong side pieces. Next up we have the back of the base of the outer box that houses the drawer and we have the back and the liner piece. So one piece is a little bit smaller and that's the liner as I'm showing here and that will go like so. And those are the pieces of the outer box. So put those to the side. Next up, I'll go through the pieces for the drawer. This is the front of the drawer and you can see where I've gone ahead and put the double-sided tape. That also will get folded down, becoming a strong piece. And that is the front of the drawer. These other pieces that I've cut from black cardstock make up the other parts of the drawer. So we have the two sides, the left and right. Then we have the, the back of the drawer, which is a bit lower. Well, it is lower than the front of the drawer. And that will go into place like so. And then we have the bottom of the drawer and the liner that goes in place. The liner is smaller. And these are the liners that go on the inside of the sides of the drawer, like so. They're not decorative panels. They are to go on the inside as liner pieces. So next up we have the decorative pieces that go on the outer box that houses the drawer and these go in the corners and there are four that look like this L-shaped and they go at the back end of the box and they fold like so and then there are four that just fold in half like so. So there are not any decorative panels for this box drawer and that's why I cut my main pieces from the decorative paper that I plan to use. I also made this label and it was a digital cutting file from the Silhouette Design Store but if you had a tag die in your stash you could use that too and this is the drawer pull that I'm using and I shall link where I got it from in the description box below. So we'll get started and we'll put this together. And I'm going to put the outer box together first. And you can see that I cut the main pieces for the outer box from decorative paper. So as I said before, there are not any decorative panels in this digital cutting file, nor will there be in the cutting die set. So I've cut my pieces directly from my designer series paper. So on screen here you can see the two narrower pieces are the two sides and the two wider pieces are the top and the bottom of the outer box. And I'm bringing in the two rectangles here. One is the back of that box and the other is the liner. So the liner is smaller and I'm going to put that to the side for the time being and work with the back of this box and adhere the sides and the top and the bottom to this piece. So we're going to be attaching the two sides to this back of the box and we're going to be using the glue tab at the very end of the pieces, just moving the others out of the way. So this is how these two will go and the other pieces that are wider form the top and the bottom of the box and they'll get attached like so. It's difficult to get all these in frame seeing they're such long pieces but I'll do my best. So I'm just going to adhere the two side pieces to the back of the box. Just taking my time to get it lined up as precisely as I can before pressing it down. 
do the other side. Taking care to line it up and be as precise as I can. And now I'm going to move to the other two larger pieces there. These form the top and the bottom of the box. And I'm just maneuvering it around so that you can get a better view of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to fold those over just for the time being, just so I've got room. So I'm attaching that top and bottom pieces to that rectangle using the glue tab that it's at the bottom of those pieces. Just putting that into position, making sure it all lines up before pressing it into place. And this next part where I turn it over, this is a little bit like wrangling an octopus, but I'll just do my best so that you can see everything. And we're not going to fold those top tabs down just yet. I want to join the sides together first. So it doesn't matter which side you start, I'm just going to start in one side and work my way around joining the sides of this box together, leaving those large glue tabs out of it at the moment. I won't fold those in just yet. I want to get the sides together first. And again, like I said, it's a little bit like wrangling an octopus, but hang in there, you'll get there because these are such long pieces. So I'm just folding those top glue tabs out of the way just so I've got easier access and so you can see a little bit better. Just removing the backings off those glue tabs and closing up that shape. Just taking care to be as precise as I can. So our box is together now and it's starting to take shape and now we're left with these big glue tabs on the ends and they will fold in like so and attached to the inside walls. This forms extra strength for the sides of the box. And then the liner piece will go in the bottom like so. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that now. So I'm going to peel off the backings of the double-sided tape and the best way to do this is to just roll it in how I'm doing it like this. Especially seeing we're using double-sided tape, you don't really have any forgiveness and once it's down, it's down. So the best way I found was just to roll it in like so. And I'm going to do that on all four of these larger glue tabs. The large pieces of double-sided adhesive I'm using here are that die cut and bond stuff that you can die cut sentiments with and stick it to the cardstock and then you've got a sticker and that proves very handy when you're doing these larger projects. You could also use glue. So I've got all those side tabs folded in that makes the sides a little bit stronger. And then I'm going to put the liner piece into place. And for that, I'm going to use glue. As I found it, you get a little bit more wriggle room when you're positioning this piece into place. And double-sided tape would not be as forgiving. So I'm just getting that liner into position and you can see that the inner and outer of this outer box is all the same paper. And that's how I wanted it to look. So we'll move on now to the drawer and the construction of it. And you can see here we've got the base of the drawer and the sides. They will get attached to that base. And then we've got the back of the drawer and the front of the drawer is the same paper as the outer box because I wanted that all to match and I wanted the main part of the drawer to be black. So I'm going to attach the sides to the base of the drawer like so, taking care to be as precise as I can. And it doesn't matter which order you do this in. I think I skipped down now to do the back of the drawer. That piece folds down and gets it and gets adhered to the underside. I'll show you that shortly. Like I kind of get all this together and then I move to the front of the drawer. But it doesn't matter which order you do it in. Is completely fine so I'm just attaching the sides of the drawer together where the back of the drawer is and the back of the drawer is lower than the front of the drawer so I'm going to remove the backings off the tape 
of the other part of the back of the drawer here and that's going to fold in to make a nice strong wall. It will also cover these glue tabs which you cannot see very well here because of the black cardstock. So I'm going to attach the front of the drawer now and as I said you could have done this before we did the back but it doesn't matter. So I'm just attaching the front of the drawer with the smaller glue tab down the bottom of this front of the drawer piece and attaching it to the base. And then I'm going to join the sides. And again, we're left with this bigger, larger glue tab at the top, but we will fold that down. That will get folded down and glued like so. So I'm just going to do that now. Take the backings off and fold this in. And this is our drawer all together. And we just need to put the liner pieces inside. So this is the liner piece that goes at the bottom of the drawer. And I'm going to glue that into position. This gives the drawer some strength. These liner pieces. And these other two here go on the inside. They are not decorative panels for the outside. If you put them on the outside, your drawer will not open and close properly. So they are liner pieces for the inside of the drawer for strength for the side walls, not decorative panels. So I'm just gluing those into position. And what I've also cut here, I've just this is an extra, I'm putting that on the inside like so because when I put the brads through for my label holder here and the drawer pull, you'll be able to see the backs of the brad and I wanted to cover that. So I'm going to put that piece inside and that's a piece I cut myself. It's not included in the die set. And you can see that the drawer slides into the outer box just nicely. Like so. giving you a look all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead now and stick these little corner decorative pieces into place and these go on the outer box. And as I said before, the, the piece that looks like an L, they go on the back end and the pieces that are just folded in half go on the front end of the drawer. And I do lose a little bit of footage coming up. So I apologize for that. So I'm just sticking these in place. This is the back end of the box where, the, where there's no opening. And this is where the pieces that are shaped like an L go. These little decorative corners are quite handy because if you've been a little bit not precise when you've been putting your outer box together, it'll cover those up quite nicely. So I'll lose the footage here. I'm sorry about that. Here's the decorative corners in place around the outer box, as I'm showing. Just giving you a look all the way around. And I also went ahead and put my label in place on the front of the box and the drawer pull. But you can see I don't like the look of the split of the brads there, so I'm going to put this piece of cardstock in place to cover it up. And it will actually give the front of the drawer a little bit more strength too to cope with the opening and closing that it will endure in its lifetime. So this was a piece that I just cut myself. I just measured it to size and cut it. And I'm sticking it in place with some double-sided adhesive. So I've got that into place now and I'm going to put the drawer into the outer box. And I'm loving the way that this has turned out. And you can see that I've chosen to decorate mine in a very masculine way. And I did that because I wanted to honour Ben as the designer. So this box measures five and a half inches here. By four and a half inches here. And it's about four inches tall. It's a nice size. 
So that's the drawer and the box assembly completed, but I wanted to take my project the next step and I'll show you what I did with mine. I wanted to make mine a memory dex card holder in the true fashion. So I have some memory dex cards here that I cut from a digital cutting file. You could use a die if you have it. And I didn't like the way they just sat loose in the box. So I decided to put in these paper straws and I cut them to size. They're around about five and a half inches which is 14 centimetres. You will have to play around with this size for your drawer. You'll need to make sure that it's the right length and it could be different depending on what paper that you've used. I used one of the memory decks cards as a guide for placing these straws into position and I just glued them in with some hot glue. So I did use one of the memory decks cards as a template and I made a mark with a pencil. It's a little bit difficult to see because I'm using black cardstock, but that's what I'm lining the straws up on is a mark that I made with a pencil. And I'm just getting that first one into position, making sure that it's straight and that the hot glue is taking a hold. Then I'm going to put the second one into position, putting the hot glue on the pencil mark that I made, sticking the first end in making sure it's got a good hold and then I'll stick the other end in. And I think this is probably the easiest way to put these in with some hot glue. It's quite strong and not moving anywhere. So I have about 18 memory decks cards here. I'm going to put them into position on those straws and that the straws are a really good diameter. It fits the memory decks cards perfectly. And the memory decks card I'm using here is a digital cut file from Nicole and you could use one of her dies, memory decks dies. They would all fit without any problems. And I'm deciding here that 18 or so memory decks cards isn't enough here. And I really wanted to test the strength of those two center straws with the hot glue. So they're not falling out when I'm shaking them, but I want to see how much weight they can hold without bending. Because I'd like to fill this drawer up, and I'm sure most of you would too if you wanted to make it. Fits in the drawer nicely, everything's looking good, but I am deciding that I want more memory dex cards. So I'll go ahead and cut about another 80, and I have 100 memory dex cards here in this drawer. So they're not decorated or embellished or anything, but I wanted to show you that you could fit in quite a lot of memory decks cards into this drawer. And the straws take the weight really well. They're not bending at all and they're not moving, which is what I wanted to test. And the memory decks cards come out like so, and there's no tearing or anything. You've got to be gentle when you take them in and out. But I'm really happy with the way that's turned out. And I'm thinking of using this one myself for a Christmas card list, names, addresses, etc. Not that I'm going to have 100 Christmas cards to send out. I have in the past, but not since the postage costs have gotten so expensive. But that's what I think I'm going to use this one for. But you could use it for many other things. And it can be decorated in any style that you like. As I said before, I've made this one in a very masculine style and that's to honor Ben as the designer, but it could be done in any style that you like. So that's my tutorial finished for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching and that you feel inspired to make one of these memory decks box drawers. Don't forget to check the description box down below for the links that I've previously mentioned. And if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would really love that too. Thanks very much for watching today. Have a great day and until next time, it's bye for now.